join us on board Ash's Land Rover Disco Discovery car thing, which is yeah. a car. And a four-wheel drive one. A four-wheel drive high-up car. It's a third generation? Yeah, third generation Discovery. Yeah, it's before it's while it's kind of was still a an off-road capable machine. Well, at least it kind of looks at you know, because it's high up and all those things, you know, it's got the height and the impression of an off-road vehicle unlike today's ones which sit lower than your standard Peugeot 106. Yeah. And we are in this vehicle heading off to the Stadford Barn Railway, which is somewhere that I have wanted to go for quite some time. It has been on my to visit list for yeah, for a while. And the main reason that we've organised a visit today is firstly it's their first open day since lockdown and one of the few events that's actually happening at the moment and uh, well we want to go to an event and secondly it's because of this man here ash when he met us was should we say a casual train enthusiast he enjoyed railways and has a few model locomotives and knew a bit about railways so he'd be excited when he goes to railways see a train go past like his class 37s that kind of level and then he met me, and I'm a little bit more of a more, more of a railway enthusiast. Eh? Yes, just a little bit. Yeah, it's it's a, a bit more of a. It's a bit more subtle. Yeah, I'm subtle. I mean, you probably wouldn't realise that I'm into my railways uh, unless I told you, but um, tiny bit into railways. And so we've expanded upon Ash's knowledge and talked a lot about railways and mm. railways and yada yada yada. And during these talks of increasing his horizons, we discovered that Ash has never seen a Garrett in real life. No. And Garrett's are awesome. I mean, it's one thing. And so that meant that I proposed that we went to Stadtfeld Barn to see the K1 in its first public appearance. Because frankly, I really want to see it. I haven't seen it for years. And um, yeah, thought it was a good idea. So we're now on the M6. I don't know where on the M6, but some featureless bit of M6 nonsense. The service is in 12 miles. Oh, good. I don't know what that is, where those services are, but... No, I know. It's in 12 miles time. We'll find out. That's, that's the excitement <laughs> of our journey at the moment is there might be some services. Uh, also, we're in a car which really does help kind of embody everything we stand for here at LMM. Yes, very. There are some switches that do not work. Yes. And currently in the driver foot, well, you've got a spa going on, haven't you? Yes, I've got a foot spa. The air console works too well. It goes splashy splashy when you put his foot <laughs> up and down. It's not right. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that, but it goes splash. When you pick me up this morning, you open the door. And a cascade of water poured out from the driver's footwell. It's not good because there's electrics under this seat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true LMM vehicle. It has many faults. Is it going to start tingling? They're like, hmm, got to the electrics, you can feel the tingle go on. Yeah, it might do. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, in true LMM fashion, don't know if we're actually going to get there. Um, but we're trying. And this is, you said, the furthest your landing's done ever. Since I've owned it, yes. I bought it in November. Before I started at Element. <laughs> what is it this generation got a reputation for? Is it, it's been like... It's head gaskets. It's been reliable, right? And not failing. Like, yeah. constant. Wow, did you see the speed <laughs> that he's going past? We're sitting at 70, and a car has just soon passed us at such a rate that he has now disappeared over he the ride. He must be doing at least 100. Oh, he must be doing the ton and more. You wow. see, these, these discoveries were prone to um, a gasket failure. They, did they have the reputation of being generally unreliable? No, 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 he's more. Okay, so just looking in the dash now, that doesn't work, that doesn't work. Does that work? Yeah, that one works. That doesn't work. No, that doesn't work because it doesn't have front fog lights and there's a lorry there. It's a good car, this. Good car. But the, them two buttons only don't work because it doesn't have air suspension on the back no more. One of the key problems with these TD5s, of course, was the air suspension bags on the back. The 
problems, they would they disappeared. The problems were they kept exploding. So this had a conversion to coil springs. I see. So them two buttons there do nothing now. Oh, that was a racial suspension button? Yes. Oh, uh, okay. Which were for the airbags. I see. Which it doesn't have. I see. Because when they go bang, you have to have recovery. And now we don't have airbags, so we don't have to have recovery. One less possible problem. Yes, the auto box does what it wants. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that does. Oh, it's an auto as well, yeah. Not very it's lovely. It means I've got cruise control. Not Which cruise parts? control on a manual? How's it going to change itself? Don't you just set into gear and off it goes? Oh, we just stick it in fifth, do we? Yeah, just put it into fifth and let it go. Put it in fifth, dump the clutch, and then it goes. And it'll be fine, it just drives on forever. <laughs> then when you take it out, yeah, it's, it's fine, it's fine, no problems. It's fine, don't worry about it. Oh, the other, the other slight thing with the day is, when we looked at doing this, we thought, hopefully the weather would be nice, and then this week has been, I think, one of the hottest on records. Yes. I thought, oh, it would be nice to get some nice, pretty shots of steam engines, you know, very hot, doesn't look very steamy, but at least it'll be nice light. Overcast is, um... Drizzle? Putting it lightly. Drizzle is, is happening. It was going to be really nice. Yeah, I have got a jumper as well. Do you have two jumpers? No, I only have one jumper. No, I don't. I do have two jumpers. My work one's in the back as well. Oh, good. I might be uh, advertising AJ Plum. Yep. Oh, Macau Pines. They are the cranes of Macau Pines. Have you ever driven a crane? I haven't, but that's... I want to drive a crane. But they're the, the people who owned... Um... Sir William was the guy who owned my loco. Really? Yeah. That's the, where, that's the the guy who owned that company is the guy that I bought my engine off. That says Sir uh, Robert on the side of that crane. Yes, because that's the company. Ah. So one of the things I'm really excited for is there's going to be 13 locomotives in steam at Stafford. And that's going to be, what well, most steam engines I've seen together this year. Oh, well, I don't know, actually for some time full stop. And they've got an amazing selection of steam engines. Yeah. Which way are we going that next junction? Huh? Where are we going next? Um, I, don't, I don't know because I'm filming. <laughs> um, hold on, I'll stop oh, filming. We'll close enough. I'll stop filming and bring up Google Maps. On the open road again. That's a useless sign. Coming up ahead. Nothing. We're no longer on the motorway. Nope. I don't know where we are. I mean, this would be a lot better if I'd been to where we've been before to be able to talk about it. But um, it's countryside. There's, we're in no man's no, no. heath. <laughs> so this is no man's heath, no heath man along it. Are we going to survive? I'm hoping to, no one can to speak for you, but... Cheers for that. Stack uh, barn. Oh my god! <laughs> that was a little fast, wasn't it? Uh, point maternity? I don't know. I think, yep. Let's go this way. Castle that way. It's a, it's a day. I mean, this is exactly where the sat nav said we were going. I'm sorry. Yes. Let's follow it along and uh, oh, there's a person in high vis, and there's many cars. There's many, many cars. The enthusiast day is going to be absolutely busy. And indeed it was, but we had successfully made it to the Stafford Barn Railway. And for somebody who had never been there before, we were blown away by the amount that was going on. Locomotives and trains were moving absolutely everywhere. It was quite simply fantastic. For those of you who haven't visited Statfall before, you're initially greeted by two lines, which are the station for the low line and the station for the high line. Both railways actually go to the same place, which is New Road Field Loop, and it's a balloon loop where they come back. Me and Ash decided the first thing to do though would be to check out the shed and one of the workshops, where we're greeted by the sight of two of the little Hunslets making their way back round to take the next train.
So the green one on the back is Jack's Lane, and that's a new build. They built that here. Wow. So it's uh, 2005. Yeah, nice little yeah, thing. Nice. Built to the same design because they have the oh, they have the name of Hunslet, who made it. So it's, yeah, Hunslet Engine Company. They carry on the name can with we, that. Can we build one? Yes. Well, I mean, you can buy them. They will build you one if you want to pay money for it. Can we have one in the shed. The, the, their money. Can we have one in the shed. Yes. 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 Our landlords would be happy. Yeah. 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 yeah definitely. Definitely. I, I we'll imagine. Far up in the shed. I see no issues. <laughs> Having seen the station, Ash and I continue our exploration of the site, amazed that with seemingly every single turn there was a train running. It was an absolute hive of activity. Here we see a banknote Wendy and new build Jack's Lane working the passenger train. Wendy is a relatively new addition to the Statfold fleet, having been donated by the Hampshire Narrow Gauge Railway Society in 2019 upon the group dissolving. And as we explored further, we came across the Garden Railway. It's wearing the just most glorious livery, isn't it? That grey, that lime grey is just lovely. It looks so perfect. And also, it's like seeing a little industrial engine in such amazing condition. Cause you think about it, a little contractor's engine. Real yeah. bent and battered and dirty. Where is that? Oh. Yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. So me and Ash oh. are both impressed by the beauty yes. of, of this garden. And also the fact that the track there runs through the path. Yeah. Oh. Oh, there's noise everywhere. <laughs> there's steam everywhere. Oh, train coming. The Garden Railway is what started off everything here at Statford. And it is frankly one of the most pretty and the most quaint and cute little railways I have ever had the pleasure to visit. And over the next few shots, I'm sure you too will fall in love with it. As we see number two Roger, a Kerr Stewart and Company's locomotive from 1918 running along the line. It's just mad how it disappears through there. <laughs> this is this is the this is the dream, mate. This is, is the dream, dream to have this. Like we need a, to convince our landlord. I did have the provisional chat with them the other day about a railway. <laughs> Let's follow the railway. I feel like I shouldn't be walking along here, but Eager to see what other delights the railway held, we continued on our exploration, stumbling across one of the machine shops, which include a wheel lathe, something that I have actually had a go with during my time at the flour mill. All right, Ash, how old do you reckon this one is? About 1930? No, this one is 1888. It's the oldest Hunslet that still survives. That's... Standard gauge, anyway. 
That's old. Oh yeah, that's very old. And very pretty. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Well, it will be when it's done. So apparently it's had a boiler done by North North. You can see it's a brand new fire, well, looks new fire box there. And then it's just here to have the bottom end done and then it will be working again, which will be amazing. Living history, buddy. Lots of living history. Curiosity satisfied for the time being, we decided to carry on down the line, coming across Hunslet's Howard number no. two and Tranquil number no. four working on the High Line. This is a Plymouth running on two foot gauge. If you notice the overhang of this is pretty much the gauge either side. It is colossal. Particularly want that one. It's a good size locomotive. And somewhere I've got a model of one of those on the double O. It doesn't really scale down to being a narrow gauge engine. It almost looks like you could put that on standard gauge track if you put the wheels out. It's amazing. We're now walking along the path, which you can just see there. Um, and this is the path that will take us to the roundhouse, which is the, the centerpiece of the Stepfold collection, if you've not been. Um, and because we're both going to book that, we're going for a walk rather than going on the train. <laughs> Talk to you for, talking for yourself there, aren't you? No. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get very far, though, because we interrupted by another train, this time with a pair of quarry hunslets. And before we even had time to turn around, it was followed by the Hunslet's top and tailing on the High Line again. So we're about to go inside the Roundhouse and show Ash the wonders of the collection here at Stafford, yes. which means we need to put on these things. Um, which for the purpose of the video is going to make it uh, slightly strange. Yes, very strange. Oh, you look dashing. <laughs> uh, can you hold that? Uh, and hold that. So welcome to the roundhouse. So there's stuff up there. Oh, that's kind of cool. Why can't I fit a like this? That's just hurtful, and you know it's hurtful to say those things. Oh yes, yeah, so that's obviously that's a model of the K1 that's outside. I don't really want. I'm not really big into my models so much. Oh, I mean traction engines. Well, do you want? Do you want to go? Well, let's go through there. So after you. Look at this stuff they have in here. Just. just. You can't see me smiling, but I am smiling nuts. That's my. Ah, oh, okay. This this one's special for me. This is a special one. This th that one. That's Bronkluth. It was Bronkluth. That's the first engine I ever drove. Yeah, she was at Bressingham, and she was. Um, oh, she was at Bressingham. Yeah, she was Alan Bloom's favourite engine. And when I was a volunteer there, when I was young, yeah, she was the the first engine I ever got to have a drive of. Yeah. So she's she's my like ground zero. She's my. She's my. That she's my first love. And then all stuff over there as well. Look at amazing! <laughs> yeah, amazing! So I've seen that running before. That Do all of these run? Uh, a lot of them are in ticket. Yeah, that's in ticket. Oh, this one, this one. Look at the valve gear. This is one of my favourite engines of all time. So your piston and your cylinder is up here which takes your drive down to this crank here, which is then on a pivot in the center, which then does a reverse across. Wow. Is that not the most bonkers? Yeah, it, when, when you see it running past, it's just gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, so I've seen her running. Beautiful. Yeah, French, obviously. Oh, good, French. So, simplex, that's what you're used to. That's the size of things we were on the yeah. other week. So that's, a, cope with that. that's a big battery thing. I think that's battery. Wow. I think it's battery at least. 
then there's more stuff over here. Ah, oh, and this is some amazing, that's a little American thing that looks so stereotypically American. It's so squat and low to the ground. It's absolutely good. Cool. over there in your stuff. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, they, these, these two turned up recently. They're, um, I can't remember where they came from, but they're, they're quite, yeah, they're new things and they're in this to be done. And that, that one is new as well. And this is one of my favorite engines as well. Arrogate is just, just the sheer size of it on the narrow gauge is fantastic. Big for narrow gauge. Yeah, uh, that's cool as well. Ah, oh, just so much stuff here. Oh yeah, World War One loco up there. Another simplex, another simplex. Wow. What is this white thing? Oh, it's a mining engine. Um, yeah, yeah it's, I think it's one of the Channel Tunnel locos. Wow. Or at least it's similar to the Channel Tunnel engines. No, it's not. It's a, but yeah, it's a tunneling engine. But Hans it's kind of like. Towards the end, Hunslet were making that's like last thing. That, yeah, however, that company anyway, Mum. That's Mum. my favourite thing. Sorry, but that's my favourite there. Oh, the Landry. Right? Yes, that's the correct use of the Landy. Yes. Do you think we can turn mine into it? Yes, I do. Yes. Oh, and there's the the golden the uh, the goose the thing here. This is quite popular in America to turn buses like that and put them on the railways. I like it. Isn't it brilliant? Yes, I love that. Oh, there's something around the back as well, I didn't realize. Oh, there's so much stuff here. Guys, if you've not been to Statfold, just, you've got to come to one of these open days. Yeah. That's, that's kind of like the level of vehicle that I would buy, I'll give you that. No, the one, the other side is kind of... Oh, is, it, is, is that worse? Sorry, bud. Oh, yeah. No, that's, that's definitely... Yes. That's, that's your style of vehicle you buy. Does that even have an engine? Huh? Yeah, yeah, that's the remains of an engine. <laughs> I would totally buy that though. You know me, I totally would. I'd prefer you to buy this one. Well, that does look slightly more complete, but I mean, that's such a big thing, isn't it? Yeah, beast. Oh, now this thing, this is gorgeous as well. So this is a, a Malay. It's, it's spelt Mallet, but I think they pronounce it Malay, because it's French. So you've got the, that one doesn't pivot, that's part of the engine, but the front one can pivot. Wow. Uh, Jung, so. There's a lot to um, maybe review here, isn't there? Oh, there's a lot to take in as well. About a week. A week? A week to review this lot. A month, mate. I like the light. The big light. No, that light. Oh, you know we got the, we got them at Great Bush. Oh yeah, I did see them on the side yeah. of the railway. They yeah, kind of look knackered. They are. Yeah. Do they not work? Oh no. I bet this one works. Do you know what? I bet you're right, it very does. Yeah. Everything here is, is just pristine. It's amazing. Oh yeah, we've got to go upstairs yet and see the stuff that's in the museum. Yeah. This is this is the running stuff. This is an armoured simplex, so it's the armoured version of what we drove the other day. Wow. But used for the war. And uh, Oh yeah. Yeah, it goes on that way. You can't see my smile, but I got a big smile. Oh yeah, there's more stuff through here as well. Yeah, this, this, the collection here is just mental. Wow. And then, that's gorgeous. That's, if I ever had more money to buy a standard gauge locomotive, that's the kind of thing I'd want to buy. <laughs> One thing that I want to review more than anything else is the go-go tractor. I want to drive a go-go tractor. And he, that is so cute, isn't it? That is cute. Oh. Well, it looks like it'd be get fused because uh, the Ooh. wheels are shiny. They're all, they've got a layer of rust on them, so I don't know how long it has been since that right. I love the fact this is called Atlas, a tiny little locomotive. Which, oh, it's from the Abbey Light Railway. Oh, you, that's um, that's very famous in railway terms, the Abbey Light Railway. Yes. Oh, I'll have to, tell you, I'll have to bring you up to speed on the Abbey Light Railway. Oh, uh, this is how they get them in. This, this is how they bring them in. <laughs> There's, um, the door opens at the far side and they've got a transporter. Ah. And they then just drag them back with this thing, I think. I think that's... Steam powered? No, nah, mate, that's petrol, that is. That's petrol, oh. No, no, of, course it's, of course it's steam. But the amount of overhang, that's your rear driving wheel on Harrogate. Then three driving wheels on the same distance again, overhang. But kind of huge great thing. The thing that I really like is the fact that it's still got the uh, re jack on the side. So for when it 
does fall off. You seen the sash? On the side of that there, that's the re-railing jack. So if it does come off the line, you've got a jack to put it back on with. <laughs> Mid-tough at light railway engines all carry them as well, because the track was that bad. Really? Yeah. I love this. This is such a huge, great engine. This place, guys, is just, it's just incredible. Absolutely incredible. Oh, that's Fuji, the picture over there, the one that's in bits we saw the boiler of. Yeah. That's what it should look like. Oh, and Liasic. Liasic's um, we've got a sister Triassic, which has just come back into service. There's a story up here that we've got King of the Starlets, which is an engine they found in America and they managed to bring back. So it's in, there's a lot of, oh, that's the American thing we saw earlier, back in its working days. Wow. But, um, yeah, look. So the King of the Scarlet, which is up there somewhere, these are engines that they found in America and imported, and they're kind of still in their original condition, like the work condition, they've not oh. been restored. And there's that one, which is, oh, something mail, not, uh, Roy, not Royal Mail. Can't think what it is, we'll see what it is, but that's a, a sectioned engine at the time, so they're gonna keep it. Yeah. Oh, which would be good, because I can tell you how a steam engine works. Steps. Yes. I'll show what one of them little ones. I've got one like that. Yeah. yeah. Right, so here we go. This is Michael That's King of the Scarlets. So, this one came back from South America, I think. But it was one of those that kind of knew of but didn't really know it existed. But this is how it was, it, it's conditioned, it's unrestored. And they're not they're not got any plans to do it at the moment. It's just gonna stay like this. Yeah, just as a showpiece. Yeah. yeah. Bearing in mind we're one story up here. Yeah, this is us. Oh yeah, we're upstairs. How did they get trains up here? Or Locom locomotives. Good good save, good save. Locomotives up here. Big lift. Yes, but there's only to track what they sit on. Yeah, just picked them up. Big crane. Yeah, it's got a hole in the bridge. I think this was kind of built around them, to be honest. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, this is my, again, I love the fact it's got all the scraps down the side yeah. of it. Ah, ah, I remember what I was saying about the fact they can build stuff? Yeah. This shows all your companies and how they got acquired into wow. things. So, we're at the top here on the Hunslet Engine Company, yeah. which took on all of these. Hunslet took on this Kerr Stewart, Avonside, Hudsford Clark, which built the engines at Mid Suffolk. Yeah. Barclay, who built the engines that I really like. Greenwood and Barclay are taking on North British and John Fowler and we got a Fowler at the Midi. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they also took on Robert Stevenson, which who had taken on Kitson and Manning Wardle. Yeah. That's why they look quite similar. So yeah, all these companies, famous railway companies, all kind of amalgamated down and out, they're all owned basically by the Hunter Engine Company. Yeah. Which is here, isn't it? Yeah, which is now based here. Wow. So I'm thinking, oh look at these, all these plates. So it's one of those things that it kind of, it had, the company kind of, they bought the rights to the company, so they own yeah. the company name now. Which it, so it's a still a present company, which is gorgeous. Oh yeah, Gertrude, that's the other one. It's not the one I thought it was. Oh, for lemons. I know, right? <laughs> I want a Messerschmitt. Is it a Messerschmitt or is it a, oh no, it's something else. Yeah, one of these little cars is amazing. Scooter car, scooter car. Got, it's, it's got it's a handle bars it's as got a handle engine in it. Yeah, handlebar steering. The possibly most uncomfortable seat in the world. It's alright, both of us can fit in it. You just have to straddle behind me. <laughs> Don't really think they'll do social distancing with that. No, no we will not. And you will die in an accident. Yes, you probably will. I want it though? Yes. And this is, yeah, what I'm trying to let's, uh, internal combustion thing is. So this is our sectioned engine. So they cleverly painted everything in here to help you understand what it is. So blue is water, as in yeah. water tank. Then you've got a gap here before your boiler. And these are all fire tubes. Yeah. So these would be surrounded by boiling water and steam. Yeah. And they take your hot fire, which is here. Yeah. All your hot gases go through these tubes. Yeah. Through your boiler heating up all the water here, so yeah. turn it into steam. Your hot gases come out here in the smoke box and disappear up the chimney. Yeah. Your steam gathers up in this part here, called the dome. Yeah. 
and then you have your regulator, which is that valve there. Yeah. And open the throttle, opens that, and allows steam to go down that pipe there, down this pipe here, to this thing here. Yeah. And it just then goes, splits it, and goes down to your cylinders. And so you get a, uh, yeah. And then you've got your valves in there, that blocky thing there. Yeah. That moves. You see the red thing there? So yeah. that way it's blocking, but it's open, will be open for this one. Yeah. To allow steam in here to push the cylinder, the piston inside yeah. in the back there. And as it moves, the valve gear, which is on the inside, which now is an electric motor fitted, so it'll work. I feel like I want to push the green Yeah, I think button. I, I just push, push the green button to it. I don't want to. Just press it. I don't want to. Yeah. That will make it work. Um, and then, yeah. Very loud. I press the button. So that shoots you that, and then you can also see now the valve gimmer. So that's now eject, inlet more. Now it's going out, stopped. Uh, that's the eject. That's now let steam come around the outside in. And now it's moving into the eject position, so the steam comes up there, up there, up the blast spot, and up there and out. So yeah, watching valve gear work is amazing because that valve has got to move to allow steam out, to block it off, allow steam in. And so that all works along with that. It's a double action cinder, you get both, so it's pushing that way and pushing back again. Yeah. So, this is a really cool thing. So, it's been overhauled to the point that it will be a, a demonstration, but I don't think they're ever going to overhaul it back to operation. Yeah. And then you've got your reverser here, which changes your cutoff. So, that changes how much the valves move. Yeah. So, in this position, that's full forward. So, you're going to get a yeah. maximum steam. As fast as you can. No, more power. You oh, get lots of steam. As long as you start moving, you lean less steam, you rely on it just expanding, yeah. and you'll hit a mechanical limit of, yeah. you can't get the steam in and out, it starts slowing you down, so you, you notch it up. And that's the, some of your stays that hold the boiler, the firebox together, yeah. pushing it and holding it together because of the, uh, the pressure you're dealing with. And look at that. It's basically on a roll of road. Yeah, it's brilliant. That's and, uh, amazing. Oh, oh yes, yeah, so the other thing is, your firebox, where the fire is, is inside your inner bit. Yeah. And you've got the outer firebox assist and that gap is all surrounded by water as well to keep it cool, otherwise wow. it'll overheat and go and start melting. From the upstairs viewing gallery, we took a moment to stop and just take in the sheer amount of stuff in the collection before asking some of the big questions. How, how did they get it up there? Well, just, just a couple of strong mates, like you and me, mate. Just lift that one on each corner. No, just... Then one, two, three, and oof. Um, you wouldn't even be able to lift an axle up there. I think they put it up there and then they put the roof up. I think it's there. I think it's there for the uh, for the. Uh... I don't think you do because look at the dents in the roof. Oh yeah. It's hit the roof. <laughs> How does it hit the roof? Big forklift. Very big forklift. I think, right, this is um, a different gauge. This is two foot six. Everything else that we've seen so far is two foot. Yeah. This one I've seen running on the uh, Welsh Quall and Clang Fair. I went to their yeah. event. They had it running for a gala for a visit. Great oh, this look. one works as well. Did did work a couple of years ago. I don't know if it's in ticket anymore, to be honest. But yeah. But two... again, knowing their engineering here, it wouldn't take much to get it back in together. Theoretically. Oh, is this a bagley? A boogley? It is a bagley. So this is a um, standard gauge version of, for you who've seen the Altonia video I did, the Alton Towers loco. This yeah. is their standard gauge version. So that's a big water cooler up there. The, the water from the engine goes, sits in that rather than a radiator and cools back down. And then your engine's there with the transmission jack shaft, presumably in there, is it? Uh, the engine actually doesn't look any bigger than the one on the narrow gauge version. And there's no prop shaft. Oh yeah, the prop shaft should go across there, shouldn't it? Yeah, because you drive. So at the back, yeah, there's your, uh, your jack shaft. Yeah. Down there. And there's a gearbox with no shaft on the end of it. I uh, assume this one does not work. I'm, I'm assuming that one doesn't work. Oh, so this is work in progress so we can see what they're working on. Ah, so that's, oh. I think that's Fuji. That's the, oh, that's its tender. tender for what? Yeah, and I don't know what number I want. The other one is, one's Fuji and the other one is, the, they both say Fuji. I don't yeah. know which, I don't know what the other one is. This is their, their workshop area. Uh, just the amount of work they can do here is just it's world class. It really is world class. So there's not a lot left of that one. No, it's going under its ten years. So every ten years, the border's got to come out and be taken apart. 
10 years. Yeah, no, that's why steam engines are so expensive. Every 10 years, the boiler comes down, goes back to that kind of... That's a working engine that's been taken apart for wow. overhaul. That's not restoration, that's overhaul. That's overhaul. Yeah, so every 10 years, you have a boiler out overhaul. The boiler goes where you get stripped down to everything you looked at, and you take all the motion apart and read all the bearings and stuff, because they'll be knackered. Wow. Yeah, to do... Steam engines, the only way to make a small fortune out of a steam engine is you start with a large fortune. Yeah, you've got to be a multi-millionaire. Of course, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, cause that's having a strip down and rebuild, and you just, um, I'll show you a picture. Is that, is that a rebuild or is that a No, it's rebuild. Overhaul. That's re that's in good, uh, that's an overhaul. That's a good engine, working engine that's cut. So both of these are overhauls? Yes, they're overhauls, rather than restoration jobs. Wow. You know what these things are? Locos and nameplates? Now they're train names. So you have, whilst an engine has a name, you'd also have a certain train. So the Bristolian is the name of a train that left from somewhere and went to somewhere. It's yeah. a special service. Like the Flying Scotsman is the train that went from London to Scotland. And then the yeah. first engine to pull it got named the Flying Scotsman in its honour. But yeah, these are all uh, special train names. Exiting the roundhouse, we were just in time to see the big bagman with a name I can't pronounce passing by. we decided that we'd walk our way down to the balloon loop and just enjoy the sights of trains working by. That's the other thing that's running state. The presumably battery tram or magic power tram. Yeah, magic. Further down the line we saw the quarry hunters again, Cloister of 1891 and Civil Mary of 1906. Soon coming the other way was the other passenger set, headed up by new build Hunslet Statfold, built here at the Statfold Barn Railway in 2005, with number 19, a Hunswell Clark works number 1056 of 1914 behind it, really showing the size difference between the two locomotives, Statfold seeing quite diminutive by comparison. Finally, we made our way to the balloon loop in time to see Hunslet's Tranquil No. 4, works number 3902 of 1971, the last Hunslet steam engine built until Statfold, and Howard No. 2, works number 1842 of 1936, working the return onto the High Line. which cleared the road for Bagnall Wendy, works number 2091 of 1919, and new builder Hunslet Jack's Lane, named after where the original factory was in Leeds, works number 3904 of 2005, working the absolutely impeccably kept good sets. It is a wonderful thing to be able to see a freight set working on the narrow gauge and frankly I don't think I've seen one that looks as good as this. Thank <laughs> you. 
it was really interesting to be able to compare the differences between the two engines, between Cloister works number 542 of 1891 and Civil Mary works number 921 of 1906. And with that, we started to make our way back up the line, pausing to see Howard number two and Tranquil working on the high line. A bit further up the line, we're in time to see Wendy and Jack Slane making their way up the bank and making a, a pleasant amount of noise. Absolutely it's glorious. It's, this is, I can't believe it's taken me this long to get here because it's just fantastic. The amount of freedom, especially on today, which is the enthusiast day, to be able to wander about and kind of go wherever you fancy and see stuff and be sensible, it's yeah. very refreshing. And just the amount of action going on, like we barely have time to look at the camera because as soon as that's gone past, well, something's moving off over there behind us I want to go see, and something's about to come down from over that way. It's, 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 it's everywhere. There is, it goes everywhere. It's brilliant. And sure enough, next up was Bagnall 2820 of 1945. Pausing again at Oak Tree Holt, we're in time to see the two quarry hunslets with the freight. As the train disappeared, we realised that we hadn't actually yet achieved our primary objective. We hadn't yet seen the garret, so we set off in search of that. And it turns out we didn't actually have to look that hard. What's your first thoughts of the garret, dear boy? It's gorgeous. And it? Very it's gorgeous. <laughs> so that one there is the first one ever and they, they get a lot bigger than that. The K1 works number 5292 of 1909 by Bayer Peacock is really a sight to behold. And you don't really get the scale of it until something else goes past, like the two hundreds working the high line. The Garrett really is huge. It almost looks too big to be on the two foot gauge. And it is absolutely stunningly beautiful and of course the first thing was that we wanted to go and see the locomotive working a train so we headed off down the line As we waited for the garret to return, we were passed once again by Stapford and number 19, making their way down the line with the freight. It was very apparent that the bank did absolutely nothing to phase the K1. <coughs> 
From this point, it made sense just to sit back and relax and enjoy the fact that the timetables had started to overlap, meaning we were getting some parallel running. Was that not one of the best things you've ever yes. seen? That was fantastic. It was wasn't wasn't it? a little engine, some stick work coming oh, up there. The two of them racing up together. That was amazing. That was brilliant. Oh. So good seeing two of them chase together each other like that. the day started to wind down to a close. But we had been promised a lineup of most of the working steam locomotives, which meant the last few workings got a little bit interesting as they tried to get all the stock and all the locomotives into the right order. What a lineup it was. Nine of the 12 locomotives that have been working all lined up, really showing the difference in design between the different manufacturers and the different ages. So um, the, the big cavalcade has disappeared off on its own, yep. back to whence it came, which yep. means it's the end of the day. Oh. Uh, it's, uh, it's not been a bad day, I suppose. No, it's not been bad at all. As days go, I've had worse. Yeah, I've had worse. It's been brilliant. It's been, <laughs> it's been so much fun. It's been incredible. If you guys have not done the Statfold Barn Railway, 
Um, the only question I have for you is why not? Because yeah. it's one of the best events I've ever been to the Enthusiast Day today. Was just incredible. Well, you've asked yourself that because you've never been here and been wanting to come. Yeah. Ages. It turned out that the day wasn't actually quite over. All the engines were lined up again as they were disposed, and me and Ash just sat back and enjoyed the atmosphere of this wonderful sight. And then the big question got asked. Exactly which one was your favourite? That one, just because it looks so much more like heavy duty. It's like quarry up, um, quarry hunter look. But then somebody's gone like, let's make it a bit more beefy and give it outside valve gear and just... Yeah, that looks nice. I like it. Looks powerful, doesn't it? Yes. So, do you have a favourite in the lineup? Black one. Which one? The Garrett. The Garrett. Yeah. Definitely. So it's the first time seeing the Garrett, and now one is I in love one. with Garretts. Yeah. yeah I'd, I'd like a Garrett. God knows what I'd do with the Garrett. I mean, you got spare money to buy one. No. Oh, Jeez. No. I wish. I mean, <laughs> something like that, Wendy. That's kind of like maybe doable one day. Yeah. Maybe. But the rest of this stuff is well. I actually think. I'm torn between the Garrett or that. Yeah. Just because I love the shape of those bagnals, they look like a proper locomotive. Yet, it's on the narrow gauge. Yeah. Ash? Yeah? Why are we the last car in the car park? I know. Uh, what's the time? It's, it's seven o'clock and we've got like a three and a half hour drive as yet. People recognised me and we've been chatting since four o'clock. Yes. Home time. So we're now on the way home. Yeah, and we swapped over, I'm driving now. Yeah. Now, as you saw just earlier, we are were the last car in the car park, which um, is because this thing that happens when you get into railways and preservation, you meet other people who are in railway preservation, you tend to talk. And uh, we talked quite a bit. For about three hours and it has been lovely it's been an absolutely wonderful well round up to the day and um as we keep saying if you haven't been to Statfold guys you really need to go because it's one of those things that words do not do it justice the collection is just that amazing and it turns out they're all an absolutely lovely bunch of lads and lasses like really nice guys there and it's super do you have a favorite thing you saw today ash a favorite or a favorite moment uh all of it all of it's a good answer i'll give you that yeah all of it that. I think for me it was the bit where they had two of them coming up the bank together, like racing each yes, other. Yes, that, that was good. That was magical. And possibly the chat at the end, the chat at the end was pretty decent. Yes. Yeah, especially because we got to speak to like, the manager there. Yeah. Right, we, uh, <laughs> and he has watched as Laurie's videos. Yeah, it's been pretty good. We had a lot of people come over to us who were involved to like, oh, we watch your videos. And so to you guys, hi guys, it was lovely to meet you. Um, and thank you very much for a very, very pleasant day. You guys should be very proud of your railway. So with that guys, we hope you've enjoyed this episode of me and Ash going hunting down the K1 and enjoying Statfold Barn for the first time. If you have enjoyed this video, how about clicking somewhere, somewhere here, I don't know what the frame's like, for the other, the last chasing giant when we went and slept in the back of 106, or below that when we went and looked at the three S160s at the Churnit Valley. Thanks for watching guys, if you haven't already, give us a like, subscribe if you haven't. See you next time.